All right. I hope you've been taking part into this study. Um, now I want to take you into two more gifts, and the first of that is the gift of ministry. So, Father, please, please bring a blessing upon everyone that hears, those that want to learn. Strengthen us, encourage us according to your word. It's in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The gift of ministry. Now, this is a very understood ministry gift, too. It's the word deacon, a diakonia. It's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 7, this gift. And when somebody has the gift of the diakonia, or the deacon, deaconess, they will be a servant to others. This gift doesn't make you a ruler of the church. It doesn't make you somebody that tells the pastor what to do or tells the church how to act or function. Actually, it's just the opposite. You will let the church and the pastor tell you what to do, and you'll obey them. The deacon's position is a very humbling position. It's the person that has it will not be loud spoken or anything else. They'll actually be quiet and humble, and they'll serve behind the scenes. That's what this word means. It means a waiter of tables, the one that ministers to the needs of others. That's what the word deacon is, and that's what it means. The deacons of the church are the waiters on the tables of the members. It does not mean they serve the meal does not mean they cook the meal. It means they wait at the table. When somebody needs more water, more food, they bring it. it comes from the Palestinian phrase around the time of Christ. The deacon or diakonesis, the deaconess, would be the slave assigned to clean up the messes after the people would eat and leave. If they spilled something, they had to clean up the person. If it was on the floor, they would clean the floors. The deacon was the lowest of the lowest of the slaves. They were It was cheaper to work them to death and starve them than it was to feed them. So they would wait at the tables, and often they would eat the scraps that were left over from the tables. Their owners, the slave owners, would not even feed them. So it's a very humbling low position. The deacon and the gift of the deacon is the one that sees to the needs of others. Once again, a deacon does not run a church. That's not even what the Bible teaches. So they're not in the administration of the church. What they are is simply a waiter of tables. I can't say it any clearer. They are a slave whose owner would instruct them in what the owner wanted them to do. They would eat the scraps that would fall from the table. So taking a look at that, let's look at the role of the deacon. Um, by the way, that's where the idea of tipping the waiter came from is it was not uncommon in Palestinian times if a slave was almost starved to death, somebody would accidentally tip their table over and the food would hit the ground and they would demand it be cleaned up and so the owner would send the starving slave over and they would watch him eat it. It was a way that they could feed that slave and sometimes they did it for their own amusement. So the idea of tipping the waiter really wasn't a good phrase. <laughs> <clears throat> but it meant the slave was so starved that they wanted to feed it or make a, a joke out of it. So the gift of deacon is not an administration gift. It is an edifying gift. The role of the deacon is to tend to the members. The deacon will visit the sick. They will shelter the homeless. They will feed the poor. If somebody's home is in disarray and they can't afford to fix it, you'll see the deacon over there with his truck backed up and his friends and a, a bunch of hillbillies working on that house. And I like hillbillies. I'm one myself. When I was a pastor in Leland, it's not uncommon. I would have my deacons go and check and visit uh, the widows, the orphans, and members. And I would tell them, you know, make up an excuse. Say, hey, I'm thirsty. And just without asking, walk over to the fridge and open it. If there was nothing in the fridge, don't say anything. You know, just say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I should have asked first, you know. And then what they would do is come back and tell me, we would go buy a bunch of groceries and the deacon would sneak up to the house, put all the grocery bags on the porch, knock on the door and take off. That way the person's not humble. They just get a gift of groceries. The deacons would load up on, you know, when we had a big snow and they would go out and shovel all the elderly people, the widow's houses. We would salt their porches. They didn't have to ask us. We were out by 6 in the morning before they would wake up. They would wake up and come out and find that their sidewalks were ice-free and their 
driveways were were shoveled. That's what a deacon likes to do. A deacon likes to minister and help people in the church. You'll find the deacon will be the one that cleans up the church after everybody leaves. They'll stay after and pick up without even being asked most of the time. Um, the deacon will always be the one, or deacon is, that God equips and God motivates to help and build up the church body. That is what the gift of the deacon is. And by the way, it's a gift for men and women. Phoebe of Centuria was a deaconess. And she kept people in her home. The church would meet there. She would feed them. She would wash their feet. She took care of them. I don't know how it happened where deacons felt like they became the rulers of the church. Actually, they're supposed to be washing people's feet at the front door so they don't stink up the house. But they don't like to do that today. And then, fortunately, because deacons don't know what their position is, many of the elderly, many of the widows, many of the orphans aren't being taken care of. They should be out there fixing their homes. They should be out there helping them to get things right. That's the gift of the diakonia, the deacon. The next gift I want to discuss with you. So, by the way, if you have the gift of deacon or deaconess, here are some of the signs you're going to see. They will have a desire when they see somebody in need to meet that need. If their home is broken, if their car is broken, if they're homeless, sheltered, if they need food, if there's something at the church that needs to be done, God will lead them to volunteer for it. It is the minister for ministering. That's what it literally means in the Greek. So if you have an unquenchable desire to see that things are done properly and that people have everything they need, this may be a gift. And it is the most humbling of gifts. You will not be proud, outspoken. It's another, another way to identify it. You will not be pushy, but actually you will let people tell you what to do and you'll do it. I received that gift through the laying out of hands also when I was ordained. And because of that, I just can't handle contention at all. If somebody speaks, I don't speak against them. I don't speak down to them. I try to help any and every person that needs it. The next gift is from Romans chapter 12, verse 7 also, and it's the gift of teaching. Teaching is the Greek word didiosko, and it simply means to be a teacher. Now, it specifically means a teacher of God's word, God's will, and God's way. It is one of the pastoral gifts. Because it is a pastoral gift, it is only given to men. Now, here's where a lot of people get agitated, and they shouldn't, because I just teach the word of God. It's not my opinion. Like I've told many women that think they're pastors, this isn't my opinion. Read me what your Bible says. And I'll have them read the scripture to me out of 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 12. Um, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. That's from uh, 1 Corinthians 14. In 1, in 1 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, he says, I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Um, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. It's said again in Timothy. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 20, it says, Let your women be silent in the church. It's not permitted unto them to speak. If they have anything to say, let them go home and ask their husbands. And <clears throat> if they need to learn something, he can bring it before the church. So I'll ask a woman pastor, who's the head of your household? She'll say, my husband is. And I'll say, well, you know what? The man is the head of the household. God has also placed the man to be the head of the church, and it's God the Father, not God our mother. When they started making females over homes and over churches, they then, like the World Council of Churches in 1997, quit praying to God the Father, and they began calling him Sophia, praying to God the Mother. That's blasphemy. They will be judged for that. They will be cast into hell for that. So if you get angry or agitated over this, Get mad at God and then repent because it is God that gives this gift. The word didiosko means to teach the scriptures. So if a woman feels like she has been called to the pastor position, she's in rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. She's in rebellion to God's word and to his will because he says plainly she can't be. The word pastor comes from the Hebrew word of shepherding. There were no female shepherds. So if a woman takes on this role of the teacher, she's in rebellion, and that is the sin of witchcraft. 
That woman is not being led by the Spirit of God because he never contradicts his word. That woman is being led by the devil. The devil is D hyphen evil, do evil. That is sinful, self-will, and rebellion. The Holy Spirit will never lead somebody to rebel against God or his word, but demonic spirits will. When a woman is in that type of rebellion, she and her husband, by the way, will be judged. She will try to take positions of authority over the men. I have found that the women that try to claim that they are pastors beat their husbands down and rule over the household too. That is sinful. It is wrong. The gift of teaching is a gift specifically given to pastors. The pastor is the poimen on Didiosco, Ephesians 4, 10. He is given to the church to teach and equip them so they can do the work God has called them from. The pastor is a gift from God to the church. We find out that in Revelation chapter 120, it says the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. These are the seven stars. They are the angels, the angelos of the seven churches. That means the pastors of the seven churches. God gives the pastor a message. Angelos means the messenger, the one who brings the message to the church. That's why he's equipped to do that. The seven candlesticks with thou sawest are the seven churches. So, to define it, the gift of teaching, didiasco, it's given to pastors, not given to women. If a woman feels like she's a pastor slash teacher, she's in rebellion against God, not me. We should be happy when we have what God has given us and our place in society. Right now, we're dealing with a country where children think they rule over their parents. Does that make a happy home when a child rears up against the parent, tries to tell the parent what to do, when the parent's providing everything for the child? No. And when we as God's children rise up and try to do it our own way in the spirit of goodness, we're actually not doing goodness. We're teaching rebellion and we're teaching self-will, witchcraft. Men would rise up for those positions if the women would respect them and God would anoint those men if they were speaking and teaching good doctrine. God will anoint no man in a rebellious church. That's why women led by the devil take over rebellious churches. This is Pastor Tom. I pray this has been a blessing for you. This is the third lecture in the series. I hope you'll join us. Uh, we're going to get into exhortation next. Lord bless you all. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.